The health care of Ontario pension plan has provided a $2 billion lifeline from Home Capital for Home Capital Group. Jim Cohane has stepped down from the board of the embattled mortgage company. He says the company's fundamentals are strong, but it might end up being sold. Certainly their cost of funding is going to go up, which may impact earnings. Uh, uh, you know, I guess you could always, uh, it's, there's always a possibility some other institution may have an interest in, in, in taking the entity over. It's, uh, you know, if you can have access to a lower funding cost, uh, I mean, it's quite an attractive purchase, I would say. For more on BNN's top line, let's bring in former Home Capital Group shareholder Michael McCloskey, founder and president of Greenskeeper Asset Management. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. No shortage of uh, headlines around this name. You sold your holdings in uh, Home Capital in the fourth quarter of 2016. What was it about that time period where you wanted to get out of the name? Well, there were a couple things. So the company started buying back its shares aggressively. Uh, last year, they did a, a substantial issuer bid. I sold a, a bunch at 37 and change. Uh, and then the bulk in Q4. And the reason, there were a couple reasons. First, the founder of the company, uh, Jerry Soloway, was no longer the CEO of the business. You know, this is a business he's built over 30 years and he's clearly a very talented businessman. Secondly, Canadian housing continues to get more and more expensive, so that was another reason. And third, they had a, a mortgage broker fraud issue. They, uh, mortgage brokers had generated about two billion dollars of mortgages, and I believe. And that was a falsification of the income, which is... Uh, uh, yeah. Correct, for, yeah, the, yeah. for the underlying borrower. Yeah, so what was yeah. interesting was the company bought those two billion, or uh, underwrote those two billion dollars worth of mortgages. They fired some of their internal people who um, may have been involved. They then went and looked at the entire portfolio, but that portfolio has actually performed quite well. So while they were dealing with that, tightening up their standards and their internal procedures, it slowed down origination volume. So for the, it was a, a confluence of those three things that, for me, I just decided, you know, given the risk reward, it was time to get out and watch from the sidelines, and we haven't owned it since then. Now, of course, the big news this week is that $2 billion lifeline from Hoop. Jim Cohane was just yes. on with us about an hour ago. I understand you watched it. What did you make of his comments? You know, it was it was interesting. He revealed something that I, I don't think was out there, which was um, it, the the two billion dollar loan is double collateralized. So my understanding is, if they if the full two billion is drawn, uh, Hoop gets four billion dollars worth of collateral, first charge against those mortgages, and mo most of those mortgages are seventy to eighty percent loan to value. So uh, if you're if you're borrowing or lending two billion dollars on four billion dollars of collateral at 15% plus rates first secured, that's a good deal. I mean, it reminds me a lot of Buffett in 08, where you've got a lender that's in a tough spot. They need to plug a hole. There are $2 billion of high interest savings accounts yeah. that are being drawn quickly. You've got someone with very deep pockets that can demand uh, very good terms. So I think it was a smart deal. Uh, I also listened to his comments very closely. I know there's been some criticism from some short sellers that um, you know, on, on his conduct. And, and what I heard, and I was a securities and corporate lawyer in my first career, he did everything by the book. As soon as he knew that his organization, Hoop, was talking to the company, he declared his conflict, he recused himself. If that deal had not been done ultimately with Hoop, the company continued to need his expertise. He was on the sideline, and as soon as it was done, it was clear that there was definitely a conflict, and he resigned. So I, I don't think he did anything inappropriate. So no conflicts there, everything done by the book? I, I believe yeah. so, from the facts as I yeah. know them. I, I think it was handled very professionally. C Canada's financial services sector is quite small. People, um, I, I would think that a home capital would want someone like him on, on their board, because you want that expertise. So no, I, I thought it was a great deal for them, and it gave home capital what they needed, short term, but unfortunately on very onerous terms. Now, it's interesting with the stock plunging more than 60% on that single day this week. Mm -hmm. The short sellers got it right in terms of the position they mm -hmm. took, but they didn't get it right for the right reason. No, I think that's correct. And that's interesting. There's a lot of people gloating now about, uh, you know, the stock's off. And we were right. Well, wait a minute. Most of the short sellers, not all, there, there may have been a few people that got it right. Most of the short sellers, their thesis was Canadian real estate is very expensive. And it is. And uh, it's only become more and more expensive. So that's going to lead to a crash. Well, that hasn't happened. Home Capital's mortgage book has actually uh, proved out to be very robust. Uh, they made $60 million in the first quarter of this year. Their loan losses are very low. Now, again, that may, their thesis may ultimately play, play out. But what's happening with Home Capital today has nothing to do with that. It has to do with people being afraid of what's happening with the company. And that's a product of... Um, the OSC investigation, I think, has spooked people. 
you know, the OS, it's ironic. Um, and yeah, I just yeah, wrote We didn't see it. that run on deposits until it became clear that there, were, there was uh, some serious allegations from the OSC, I believe. Well, I think that's right. And the OSC, uh, look, one of their mandates is to preserve and protect investor confidence in the capital markets. So they believe they have a case. And again, there's, the company's denied it. And there's been no hearing. So I think you've got to give them the benefit of the doubt. But the OSC felt that it was doing the right thing by the public markets. Uh, by bringing these charges. Unfortunately, it spooked DBRS and credit rating agencies. It spooked shareholders, and it started to spook um, you know, some, of the, some of the depositors in the company. The business hasn't been performing that well. The company gets rid of its current CEO or former CEO, Martin Reed, to, again, bolster confidence that we're going to run this business better. And DBRS take notice and downgrades, and then people get notice. This is a run on the bank. I mean, when was there a lot, the last time there was a run on the bank in Canada? It was in the 1990s. So again, the shorts got it right financially, but for the wrong reasons. Home capital is not a fraud. This business has been in business for 30 years. They made $250 million last year, $60 million in this quarter alone. What's happening is uh, people have $2 billion of demand deposits, and they're demanding their money back. Yeah, a, it's the collapse of conf confidence, really. They just don't want to park their money there anymore. No, that's right. And, and there's another irony here in that OSFI, it, in, this isn't very well understood. Three, four years ago, HomeCap did not have very many demand deposits. They only had about $100,000 worth. But OSFI encouraged the company to diversify its funding sources. So historically, HomeCap funded its business by uh, matching its, its liabilities with its assets. If I'm going to write $100 million worth of one-year mortgages, I'm going to issue $100 million worth of one-year GICs and match my assets and my liabilities. But OSFI encouraged them, uh, as I understand it, to diversify by taking demand deposits. Well, unfortunately, those are the first to leave because customers can demand them. Mm -hmm. So, again, they're trying to do what they believe is right and very well-meaning, but ironically, um, given what's happened today, I think it actually exacerbated the run on the bank. So where do we end up here? Because that cost of capital, it might be a great deep deal for Hoop, but yes. you cannot make money if that is their cost of capital unless you want to yes. raise your mortgage rates to 30%. Well, I think it, they're not going to do. No, I think that's right. But what it does is it plugs a hole. So they have to, their high interest savings account, their demand deposits are leaving quickly. They need to plug that hole. That's what this does. If they can continue to keep uh, the faith of people that are holding their GICs. And again, the demand deposits and the GICs are, are subject to a government guarantee under the CDIC. Mm -hmm. Up to 100000 right? Correct. So if you have less than $100,000 with uh, home capital or home trust, your money uh, sh should be good. Uh, even if the company gets into trouble, it's backstopped by the government. Um, you know, and how that plays out, I don't know. But if they can keep generating business and funding their business, it's a very profitable company. Um, and, but that's the question. Can they continue to do that? And, and that's what they're working on. Interesting days ahead. Thanks for your insight. My pleasure. Thank that you. Michael McCloskey, founder and president of Greenskeeper Asset Management.